from the courts to a potentially life-changing breakthrough in the medical field this week. There's been no real treatment for Alzheimer's, a form of dementia, but now a new drug is showing particular promise in showing co cognitive decline in slowing cognitive decline rather in the early stages of the disease. This has emerged from a global trial of the drug Donanimab. And I'm joined now by Emeritus Professor of Neurology and Neurosciences at Bits University, Girish Modi. Uh, Prof Modi, thank you so much for joining us. You know, in recent years, we have heard about a number of drugs starting to slow Alzheimer's. Yeah, you, you see, I think uh, about six months or so ago, there was uh, uh, the first monoclonal. Now, you must understand, these are antibodies that are being used to treat Alzheimer's. So that in itself is phenomenal. I mean, when I was growing up, Alzheimer's was a neurodegenerative disease, and we thought that nothing in the immune system would uh, do anything about fixing it. There is an inflammatory component. And now that they're showing that these antibodies, antibodies, immune antibodies can slow down a disease like Alzheimer's, that is exciting. From a scientific point of view, very, very exciting. The first one that came out about six months to a year ago showed promise, but this one is particularly exciting because of the 35% uh, reduction or slowing down of cognitive decline. We've never had something like this. You know, Alzheimer's as a neurologist is, is the one one of those diseases that you really, really don't want to make because firstly hard to diagnose and secondly impossible to treat. Yeah. So uh, this is indeed exciting, exciting work. Very exciting. And it's going to change the face of neurology. It will eventually more and more drugs will come out and we'll get better and better results. So it's opened the door, and I think that's what's important. The critics are going to say, da, 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 this is uh, preliminary trials, we need more trials, we need more data. Yes, of course, we need all of that. But look at the fact that we now have something that really slows down cognitive decline. Mm. That I, in I, itself alone is impressive. Absolutely. Um my understanding of, of Alzheimer's is that um, it's caused by the build-up of these, of plaque, amyloid plaques, I think, um, mm. and something called yeah, tau yeah. on the neurons, and that just stops the brain functioning it, as it should. So it, how does this um, yeah. antibody treatment work? So, so, so that's, that's the exciting bit. So the antibodies bind to the protein and, and help break it down. And in fact, clear amyloid from the brain. So that's where, where the interest is now. And the science is going to establish and develop further in that respect how the antibodies, by binding to these plaques and also the tau protein, how it clears this in the brain. So by clearing this, it improves or slows down cognition. And, and this is the area of research that will, will just, you know, mushroom, as they say. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's such wonderful news. And, and for anyone who's had experience of a loved one with Alzheimer's in particular, it is a devastating disease because essentially that person, terrible, terrible, terrible. the personality just disappears before your very eyes. It is, it is truly tragic. So this is a very yeah. hopeful moment. In the United Kingdom, I think their um, monitoring bodies are now assessing it for potential use on the NHS. Um, how soon before yes. we might be doing the same thing in South Africa? How soon before you might be able to prescribe it to a patient mm -hmm. in the early stages of Alzheimer's? So, you know, your guess is as good as mine in that regard. Um, and so our, our uh, body, SAPRA, uh, is fairly strict. But I think when something like this is globally accepted, uh, in, and especially the NHS, who we tend to listen to more than, let's say, the Americans, uh, is going to put it online on, on in their system. Then I think it's going to be that we um, in South Africa will be forced into getting this as soon as possible. I'm hoping. Um, 
I, I think it would be grossly unfair. Then there'll be a whole lot of other mischief that'll happen. People are flying over to the UK or wherever, trying to get this in various other ways. So instead of allowing that kind of mischief to develop, I do hope SAPRA mm. will take a, a strong stance on this and positively and look at this positively as 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 a, a kind of treatment that should bypass. Uh, you know, sort of all their regulatory yeah. uh, controls. One, one of if the they issues, speed through the yeah, with with Donanimab, uh, as the you issues say. are always going to be the, the issues with all new drugs are that it's not been around long enough. We don't know complete data on safety, side effects, uh, you know, uh, toxicity, especially to the immune system. In this case, toxicity to the liver, uh, things like that. Will it cause other other unwanted side effects? Um, and so you've got to balance that. And you know, it's always like that that scale, balance between the bad things that the drug gives you and the good things that the drug gives you. And also, we have a third factor that the disease in itself is a terrible disease. So if you give some hope, I think you, you have to jump onto it. Yeah, absolutely critical. And, of you course. know, it would be like. If I if I realize I've got early uh, Alzheimer's, and if I'm given this drug, unfortunately, I would use it. Yeah, so would I. I have to say, um, and so, I think for you, many you're people who've seen, give up yeah, that critical yeah. though, of course, on this is it's got to be early diagnosis, and that's an interesting yeah, one because so that, how do we first of all? Um, does that suggest that people with a family history of Alzheimer's should go for gene testing, for example, to see if they've got the gene and then be on a strict program to monitor? And how do you monitor for early detection? So th this is the big problem. So there are ways of, of, of looking, you know, you, when you mentioned the gene thing, you talk of the Apple E4 gene, which is a risk factor for Alzheimer's in families with Alzheimer's. Um, the problem is when do you identify early Alzheimer's? Now, there is something that, that we call MCI or mild cognitive impairment. And this is what one might call the forgetfulness of the elderly. Not all patients with MCI go on to develop Alzheimer's. So when you start developing those forgetful traits, are you then going to become a candidate for this drug? The answer is we don't know. So, um, you know, I think one of the big issues that's going to be raised is how do you make the diagnosis in the early stages and how accurate are the tests that we have. So you can do scans, MRI, CT, you can do the cognitive tests, etc. But early on, you, you could miss it. Yeah. It's not an absolute. Absolutely. So that may become a, an issue with time. And so I think... As we're driving towards finding these new molecules that are helping, we need to drive towards finding tests that can make this diagnosis quicker or very, earlier. Very important point. You mentioned something earlier that I want to pick up on, which I'm finding fascinating. You said when you first started studying, um, it was seen, Alzheimer's, as just a degenerative disease. But you say there's definitely mm. an inflammatory component. What does that mean? And does that suggest that through our lifestyle choices, what we eat, um, how we exercise, for example, can we manage it? Can we slow the risk of Alzheimer's through our behavior? Mm. I, I think I've just opened up a can of worms here. Yes, you have. The, the inflammation <laughs> and the concept of inflammation. So I set myself up there, I think. So it, it may well be, it may well be that inflammation, in, you know, the question arises, can you settle inflammation in the brain through lifestyle changes? I don't think there's a clear answer for that. You know, changing diet, eating healthy, not eating uh, red meat, or often smoking, etc. The, the markers, the, 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 the products of which do lead to inflammation in the body, um, whether by changing this you can change the, the pattern of the disease, I'm not quite sure. A fair point. I guess it can't help to try to live a healthy lifestyle because no, it no, helps no, with so many thing. other issues. It's a good thing. There, there's, yeah, yeah, it, it, that's what I'm saying. The healthy diet, the healthy living, the exercise, not smoking, 
the moderate drinking, etc., very important. The Mediterranean diet is, is excellent. And if nothing, it keeps you healthy. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, um, for really explaining all of this. I don't know if it's this. going to stop. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, it, you've, you've given us a really, really good insight. And let's hope we can speak again. Um, and let's hope that this drug uh, passes all the tests so that it can indeed be available. Uh, because as the professor said, it is potentially a massive groundbreaking treatment uh, for early Alzheimer's, early stage Alzheimer's, uh, and it may slow the disease by up to 35%, if not more. But more importantly, I think what he said is it could herald the beginning of a whole new antibody treatment system that could bring incredible hope to people who are devastated by a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. That was Professor, professor Girish Modi. He is an emeritus professor at, of neurology and neuroscience at Fitz University.